present. My name is Matt Nicola. I'm in the demo scene and I'm a preacher of traction and several other groups. And I'm a lousy programmer. But that's why I'm here, because uh, there are other sides to demo programming except the technical stuff. And then this is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. So what I am going to be talking about is I'm going to, uh, giving a small introduction to demo programming in general. Then I will be talking about ideas, and then I will be talking about different ways to actually bring those ideas on the screen with some examples of my my previous work. Okay. So uh, demo programming. Uh, how many of you here are, are not familiar with demos in general? Anyone? Okay, a few people. Well. A demo is a non-interactive real-time show of visuals and audio and kind of a modern art form. They started in the 80s with ACS on computers. And uh, nowadays they are being done on all kinds of modern platforms from cell phones and modern computers to game consoles and old computers. Demo programming in general uh, reminds a lot of uh, like game programming. Like I'm a, a game programmer by trade. And, uh, but it's kind of game program with all the boring stuff. The demos are not interactive, so they are like just shows of visuals and the text and music. And so you don't have to actually do uh, like for example controls or whatever, and you can decide what, what to show to people. And uh, and the great thing about demos is that they are your thing. Like for example, if you're making a game, you have to like think of what the player wants to wants to do and like make it fun for the player, but when you're making a demo, you're just making a presentation of technical skill. And there is an old, uh, demos, uh, old debate in the demo scene about code demos and art demos. So when the demo scene started in the, in the 80s, uh, it was mostly about people doing things on computers that they did not think were possible. So it was, it was that competition of like who is who's making uh, the most awesome stuff on the computers. But uh, in the 90s, uh, there was this new, uh, new uh, stream of demos which were actually more into music videos and like, art form stuff, and they did not really that much uh, go into the, uh, the coding part, so it's like more about style and actually the technical merits. And uh, nowadays, uh, lots of demos are done on PCs and other modern platforms. There are still few demos done on old school platforms like the Commodore 64 or the Commodore Amiga or all those things. And uh, lots of modern demos use all that, uh, pixel shaders and all the cool stuff that we now, we now have. But uh, still, uh, as the technology has progressed, we are still doing more stuff about style. So, for example, you can have minimalistic demos or industrial demos or all kinds of uh, non-usual computer graphics. And that, to me, that's the, exact, that's the most awesome thing about demo scene. Okay. And now, I'm, now uh, I am going to talk about a bit about ideas, and I want to do it by an analogy. Like, what is a good idea, and how do you actually, uh, how do you actually bring a good idea to life? And, uh, so, uh, how many of you have seen the new Batman film? Yeah, so it, it, it's awesome. How many of you have seen the Superman Returns film from a few years ago? Few years ago? Yeah, that was not that awesome film, in my opinion. And uh, the reason I think is that because Batman as a whole is a much better storytelling device. Uh, like you can see here, some of the basic stats about superheroes. So the Batman, so, uh, Superman is like this huge, huge big guy from uh, Planet Krypton who's like you not know, human and he has, can do all kinds of things like fly and burn people with his eyes and all so forth. But, but Batman is this really strange, like old billionaire who is, who is living in a mansion and dresses up in a robot suit that resembles a bat. So, uh, so the implications are, and actually, uh, for, from a storytelling point of view, uh, Superman. Uh, stories need the an the antagonist of the Superman stories need have to be huge, have to be like this really galactic scale of things. Well, in the Batman stories, you have this corrupted Gotham city, you have 
like this uh, mad people who are trying to take over the world and so forth, but they're still uh, kind of like lower end compared to that Superman stories. And then also uh, the Batman stories are much closer to what uh, the kind of things that are familiar to like normal people. Like we all we are all afraid of crime. We are all afraid of uh, society and so forth. And uh, that makes them, them much more much more easier to actually relate to. So uh, and anyway, uh, more yet, the Batman's like the Batman stories are they are dark, they are scary most of the part, ex except the 60s one, but that doesn't really count. Uh, and uh, they cause more emotions to us. And my point with this thing is that uh, I think that good. Uh, or excellent storytelling is uh, is more about uh, the abstract ideas and like making you feel something. And I think that uh, very unfortunately, very few demos uh, do that. But I think those are the good ones. So about demo ideas, demos and ideas in general. Uh, Usually, demo scene visuals are very, very abstract. Like, for example, in computer games, you have you need to have this kind of environment, which is very familiar to the player. For example, in Counter Strike, we have these buildings and houses and and uh, forests and whatever. But the, uh, demos, demos are uh, mostly abstract. So we have these very uh, things that are not really not necessarily resemble uh, things in real life, but they are more about computer art, uh, like uh, music videos and so forth. But there are actually a few storytelling demos. Most of them, to be honest, are not very good, because uh, usually the people who make them kind of like try to do too much, and they end up, end up uh, well, well, going on maybe. But there are good ones as well. And uh, as, as in all uh, scenes, like art scenes or emo scene or whatever, uh, there are these uh, cliches and style which is, which uh, kind of define the scene, as always in the demos. So in the 1980s and, and 1990s, the demos were usually pretty much the same, and the demos went through phases, which has like in the, in the 1980s, you know, on the old computers, we had like strollers and like uh, certain kind of kinds of effects, and when the demos moved to PCs and Amigas in the early 90s, uh, the effects uh, started being like 3D uh, rotating objects and like small 3D worlds and uh, things that take advantage of the hardware on those computers. And, uh, then, and nowadays, demos are more about computer graphics in general, so you can actually see uh, lots of the stuff that's in games, you can see in demos, but uh, there are still, like, for example, at, th at this moment, the number one, one demo scene cliche in productions is the blue effect. You can see it in modern games, but like, I think every single demo nowadays is blue. Uh, well, at least every single of my demos is. And uh, in general, the demo scene is, uh, everybody's style is very open and uh, allowing for all kinds of approaches and ideas, so uh, the style that the demos are produced in is very, very varied, so we have things like, I like making minimal techno stuff and like uh, progressive rock things. Uh, some people like doing drum and bass, like it's industrial things with robots, I know there are a few people here who like to do that. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm talking about you. And uh, we have, we have from classical music to modern rock music to everything in the demos. So, so uh, when you're implementing your ideas or your demos, it's you can do anything as long as it's, as long as people will like it. And of course, some people do think that people won't like, and I'm one of them. I'm proud of it. Uh, so, in basic ways, basically there are three different ways to make an actual demo which I line up here. First, you have an idea or a concept, and then you make a demo around it. For example, you might want to make a demo about, let's say, trains. So you can start thinking that you may, might be build, uh, building a, like a, a 3D world with trains going on. 
or you could want to, for example, one of my ideas, which I have not implemented yet, is that I want to make a demo about uh, futurism in the 20s and 30s, like how they will view the 20th century or the beauty back then. So I, I, I want to have these zeppelins and skyscrapers and like robots and all kinds of, all kinds of things that people wonder about them. Uh, usually demos with uh, these have uh, uh, storyboarded or concepted first, so you have concept art and like maybe you try out a few things, maybe you do, before you actually start making your own demo, you might do things with, uh, for example, some 3D software and see how it looks. And then uh, the other uh, many way of doing a demo is uh, just make something first. This is, this is usually very easy for the programmer. So it's just like go some, something first. It, it might be a 3D engine, it might be a cool particle system, in fact, it might be I don't know, some cool uh, thing you found from a computer uh, graphics paper, so you implement it. And then you realize that this, this thing is actually, this might be really cool, so you want to make a, a you want to like start tweeting around it to make it look cool. For example, uh, one of the effects that people who are now new in demos nowadays is uh, are the smoke uh, simulators or like fluid, fluid simulators. It's pretty complicated mathematically. They are being they have been researched a lot more recently. So a friend of mine made made a like this really 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 basic uh, fluid simulator thing, which is like you. Well, if you can use the similar smoke, and then my friend uh, started wondering about like how could how could he actually make it cool? So he started treating it. He added fire. He added water, and then he had like three or four different scenes with uh, with the fluid simulator, and uh, and uh, he's, and then he added all kinds of other visuals on top of it. So basically, the concept was the fluid, and they all did. Uh, scenes in the demo just exploited the concept. Actually, this demo has not been released yet. Uh, my friend said that he's working it for this party. I don't know if he has finished it. I hope so, because the pre previous was really cool. And uh, this uh, kind of make something first and then build a demo around it. This the general way of doing demos and demo scene, I think. There are like some people, including me, use this method a lot. And it's kind of a personal preference. And of course, the third method of doing a demo is just like you do stuff and hope it will turn out okay. And unfortunately, many demos, many demos are done with this method. It might produce good things, might not. Uh, usually, usually at least I have done, I have used this method as well. So I just like do stuff and then like somehow try to tie it together. And from the creative point of view, this is not really a, a good way of doing it, but you can manage. And uh, ideas in general, like uh, people make demos about what they like. So if you're into robots, you can make a robot demo. If you really like techno music, you can make techno demo like a BJ in a BJ style or whatever. And like I have made over 40 productions, and I think my um, ideas where I have gotten are very varied. So I, I had, for example, I had this uh, one uh, nightmare about this man who had a, whose head was made out of butterflies. It was really creepy, freaky nightmare. I couldn't sleep after that, but uh, I decided to make a demo about it. I called it the Butterfly Thoughts. It was not really a good demo, but the idea was there. And of course, uh, nowadays, many people watch, for example, MTV and uh, random music channels and like music videos are filled with all kinds of cool stuff, so there are groups who, whose approach to making demos is very much like uh, they take ideas from those things and like pop culture and they put them on, on the screen. So whatever you find interesting is worth making a demo about. So uh, now I'm going to talk about, about two of the demos that I have made. They are called Fiat Tomo. This was released in NASA with 2005, which is uh, which was held in Finland, and uh, called Traction from the Ultimate Meeting 2004 that was held in Germany. Now, these are both uh, rather old compared to, I have, I have made like, I think, 20 demos since then. 
but I chose these two for the presentation because they are, in the visual link, they are pretty similar and uh, they have this kind of same outlook on things and I both also think that both of these are among my own personal favorites of the demos that I have made. Okay, so uh, let's talk about Fiat Homo first. Uh, the, the concept that I had for it was human evolution of the original concept. Uh, the name Fiat Homo comes from a, a book. Uh, it's called Cantical Polybobits. It's an uh, old American science fiction novel from the 50s. So it's divided into three parts. It tells the story about a nuclear holocaust and like uh, the resurrection of society after it. So the book is divided into three parts. There's Fiat Homo, Let There Be Man. Uh, Fiat Lux, Let There Be Light. And Fiat Voluntas Tua, which is like, Let That Will Be Done. So uh, that's one of the books that I have, uh, I read and I was, when I was like 15 and I was really impressed by it and it's left a permanent mark. So when I decided to do a demo about human evolution, I, I immediately knew that the Fiat Homo is the name I want to use for it. And the inspiration was that I was in Frankfurt in 2005 attending my first breakpoint demo party in Germany. You should all go there, it's a fantastic place to be during the Easter. And I had some extra time off, so I went, I went uh, sightseeing. And then there's this uh, place called Senckenberg Museum of Natural History, which is one of the largest in Europe. And there was this really awesome uh, collection of fossils, like uh, transitional fossils from like I think it was rodent. I thought that this would actually make like a really good demo or presentation, like having uh, having this thing more from one like one place to another. So I decided I want to do a demo on that. And I actually I wrote uh, that very night. I wrote the first storyboard uh, with it on a notebook. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show it to you because the notebook was stolen on the, at the airport. But, but I. But I, it gave me an awesome chance to actually try out stuff and abandon some of the ideas that I had first. And also, another reason I wanted to do this demo because, well, uh, back then I there was I'm still there still is uh, this debate about intelligent design in the United States uh, and also in Europe, and uh, that's like a hobby of mine. That, following that stuff and a theory of evolution, so I wanted to express my personal thoughts about the topic in a form of a demo, an abstract way, but still. Uh, the, I think that uh, many people don't use demos as vehicles for their, for their own, uh, own views and just concentrate on making stuff that they think is cool, that's fine, but I think demos can also be done to prove some points and uh, uh, this production is a 64K intro, which is a, a demo that's restricted to 64 uh, kilobytes in size. It's kind of an arbitrary restriction uh, from the old times, but they, it's, it offers uh, unique challenges, unique challenges to actually like fit uh, music and visuals in such a small size, and uh, all things are generated procedurally. And before that, I had made only a couple of. Uh, demos and I wanted to do a 64k intro, so I decided that this would be an excellent project uh, to try it out. So uh, I'm now going through the entire entire uh, entire intro, and I'm going to be telling about how I actually came up with this stuff. Uh, but my original storyboard contain ideas that are kind of impossible to actually, with my skill set, uh, are kind of impossible to actually implement. So I decided to cheat and go the easy way and like keep the concept of the evolution and like the progression in the universe, but uh, do it in a bit more, perhaps easier way. So the demo starts out with, uh, with an uh, with a, uh, explosion, like a big bang. So this is a very simple particle system. So it's just like a bunch of particles which are uh, emanating from one point to uh, to fill the screen. And uh, 
And there we go to the agents. Actually, I tried some like actual visuals to like make the original parts glue on some quarks, whatever, diffuse into atoms, but that did not really work that well. It did not look good. So I just decided that I cheat again, and I will have, I will have the camera zoom into one particle, and other that will, be, will appear the atom. And uh, I don't have a screenshot of this, but there's like this scene where there are more of these coming up, so basically it's kind of aggressive, advancing. And sorry to interrupt, we can run the intro if you want. Uh, sorry? We can run the intro. Can you? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. Should we? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I had, uh, I had originally a small Linux laptop which could not run it even in the last drive, so I decided not to show it, but that's awesome if you can. Just a sec, the refresh rate wasn't a bit exotic. It's your code, so... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I totally have a lousy programmer.
can see the original concept of the human evolution part if you really did not make it into the intro. And also the pixels were huge from up here. This is the first time I'm actually seeing this intro on a big screen because at the party place I had some other commitments so I had to go. Well anyway, uh, so uh, this part is supposed to re represent the molecules which kind of form after that explosion. And, uh, so then I wonder the one, one, what would actually be the one thing that kind of signifies life like in this very primitive molecular way? Like, well, the obvious answer is the double helix of the DNA. So I got my code with this. It's, uh, as you can see, it's kind of buggy, so the things on the edges, the particles kind of overlap. I have no idea why it's doing that. The small things around it are supposed to represent uh, some kind of proteins or molecules. Uh, but they are mostly there just for, to make it not, not look that empty. And this thing, uh, so I, so, so the obvious the next step is cells. So this is like this are supposed to represent very simple cellular life uh, of the proteins. They actually appear in the same places as the proteins. But that's a small visual detail. Uh, then we have this life scene. Uh, this is a cellular ultimatum. It's called the Conway's Game of Life. It's, uh, was, I think it was invented in the 60s. It can produce fascinating patterns. It's, uh, the old these have like small rules which uh, compute the next iteration. And as you saw in the intro, this is actually the first, first part which uh, has any kind of uh, motion in this intro. So the first scenes are very static. This is like, as, uh, I was trying to make this like look like this is actually something happening with the life part. And so then we advance a bit further. We have this uh, sea bottom, what is supposed to be a sea bottom, with these uh, plants coming up and oxygen. And as you can see, we are now about halfway through the intro, and uh, we have, haven't still gotten to the actual human evolution part. Uh, but I was making this, this uh, at this point, I, I usually make them a sequentially, so I start in the beginning and go to the end and then I tweak it. But this part was actually, I felt like I need to do something uh, to actually make the transition from the, from the original concept. So, uh, so now there's higher life, there's amoebas, these things were the painting the Aztec code, they are very, very simple uh, 3D objects, they are procedurally generated, but the, long, the movement is all I made, I spent like two days working on the movement, like fine tuning, it's all hard coded, I don't use any kind of tools, some people use tools, the, uh, they, I think they are like 15 lines of code, how they move, but the code is totally unreadable, I can't read it myself anymore. And also a funny detail about making this part, you, see, you saw with the music that these were synced. I, I think one of the problems with this production itself is they are not really synced very well with the music, the visuals. But we spent like I think like two or three hours with the musicians just to uh, just deciding which videos we will bring when, and I was frustrated because because he was very particular about it. And now uh, this is the part which is probably the most uh, cheating thing in the entire intro. Uh, I decided that we are, I actually now I need to go from sea to land because all the higher life and the procedure the was originally supposed to represent happens on land. So uh, I made this really empty scape. So unlike the other parts of the intro, this is actually dark brown. It's not black. Uh, and there's this like particle system which is supposed to represent like this huge wind, uh, like strong winds, like. Uh, Inhospitable conditions on on the primal land, and now uh, at this point I really hit uh, like a, an issue. And my uh, intro was supposed to be about like uh, kind of like op uh, opposed to intelligent design, but I actually needed to some kind of needed to have like some kind of a way to get from this to the next step. So what I did was that I uh, took the monolith from Publix 2001, which is probably one of my favorite uh, movies ever, and I kind of just put it there. This, uh, this was the last 
seeing that actually being completed. So there was a prolonged time. There was between this and the next part, there was there was a, a just a white part. This was completed one weekend before the party. So you can see that the life is spreading from the monolith. And I think uh, even though this kind of defeats the original purpose of the intro, it's also a in my opinion, kind of, kind of a nice touch to actually get from uh, like outside to actually tie this uh, to the rest of the world. This intro. Uh, now, the flower part. This is uh, one of the effects that I'm most proud of that I've ever done. I think it looks nice. I made a window screen center out of it. If somebody wants it, you can have it. Uh, this, uh, to be honest, this, uh, now in retrospect, this thing does not fit the intro very well. It doesn't fit the visual stuff. But, uh, but it kind of offered me a very nice way to get, uh, to like, put the uh, clothes, like uh, when a magician puts a clothes like on top of things and then he does stuff. This is like my version of it. So it, uh, so it ties into this part. So basically the camera just passed out and we have the city. And you can see the monolith there, it's just supposed, like, supposed to signify the next step of the, in the evolution. So we have this futuristic city. Uh, and with those, well, the, all the interesting very abstract styles and those things are supposed to be like this uh, flying cars flying into the city. And from that, uh, we go to this part, uh, like in 2001 when Dave Bowman uh, finds the monolith beyond the Jupiter. Uh, he kind of turns into this next step of human evolution, which is like the star child or whatever it is called in a novel. So this is my uh, uh, magician drew me a bunch of. I told him that uh, draw uh, draw me some children, a bit of children, so he drew me maybe his babies. And these are like uh, people evolving from the next uh, to the next day from the city part. Finally, uh, they just go into the galaxy and I don't know, become gods or something. Uh, this, uh, this is also the greetings scene from. Uh, and actually, uh, there is, you can't see it, but there is one of those monoliths. It's like a hidden joke, it's like it's in the black part, you can't see it, but it's actually there. So, the end result of this uh, thing was it. I think it's uh, my uh, second most. Well regarded production ever. I got huge amounts of email from this, like uh, starting from "I love you" to "Why did you do this?" to uh, "I think your statement on the intelligent design is wrong, and I think it's right, and so forth." I had lots of good conversation about it, and if I'm if I ever uh, want to show people like what is my favorite number one favorite hobby in the world, this is probably the first thing I will show them. But of course, it failed its original purpose and concept in the most spectacular way because it was supposed to be a human evolution. Now we have this like history of the universe from from the Big Bang to the end. But, but I think it turned out okay. I think this is also a very uh, good example of my personal creative process because I usually ramble and go from like I don't go from A to B, but I like uh, mix up weird things. And uh, so I go with the flow, and I am actually going to do the proper version of this one day, so I wish would uh, do the original concept. Okay, so uh, that was the, uh, my process from actually from the design to the code. And now this is the opposite the way around. It's called traction. Of course, my group is called traction, but the demo is called traction, and this. Uh, this started out as a blur filter test. I had implemented a very simple blue filter, and I decided that it would actually be rather nice to have a, like this blur also because it's basically the same thing. And uh, so this is the scene of the original blur filter test. So you have, have these wireframes, uh, cubes, which are blurred in the background, and these cubes are moving very slowly in the original test because I wanted to see how the, how the uh, blur covers the pixels. And then I decided this thing actually looks in a way pretty stylish and pretty nice. So I 
So I, I found my musician and asked him, does he have a song, like any kind of song? And what happened is that he got to me, he had this really uh, chilly ambient song with like, it has, did not have any rhythm, it did not have any melody, it was mostly just a soundscape. And he gave, me, he gave it to me, and I thought, that, okay, that's kind of cool, like maybe I can work this, work this song into uh, like a proper demo. And then I started, started thinking, so I have now this, uh, this visual th style, visual thing, and like what I am going to do next. And the effect source code was called abstraction.cpp. I don't know why I usually name my effects in a very like confusing and amusing ways that have actually no relation to anything. So then I thought, that, okay, uh, abstraction, like it's abstraction, and like, uh, like what, which other words end with the word traction? So maybe I could like maybe have a pun on that. So I look at one of these uh, one of these dictionaries for for uh, crossword puzzles, and I found out that there are actually seven words in, English, in the English language that end with traction, which are listed there: abstraction, contraction, subtraction, distraction, extraction, attraction, and retraction. Okay, so that's seven words. It's like a perfect length for a demo. The song was like two minutes and thirty seconds long, but that's like perfect, perfect length. So I made a demo out of those those words, like uh, one scene for each word. And of course, this this is, the whole thing is very abstract, so you can't like uh, make it real life distraction or real life attraction without actually getting what the silly in my opinion. So so uh, and also because the uh, they all had interaction. I decided to call the demo interaction, which is also fun, on the white album by the Beatles, especially since that whole thing is actually quite white. And uh, so that was the visual style and the music, which is kind of uh, very ambient and chill. So uh, the demo starts with abstraction. We can, we can play this one too. Okay. Now, uh, as the German party organizer said when they were going to show this, this will be the most boring two and a half minutes of your life. They actually said that.
of it. Uh, this, uh, this is the abstraction thing, which has, again, has no idea, like no regulation to actually abstraction anymore, but it's called abstraction. You can actually even see that the original blur filter that I made is actually not working very well because it's kind of instead blur, like it doesn't put the top of the those lines and it puts them like a bit to the side. So, uh, this is abstraction. Uh, so I decided that how, I wonder how, how I, could, I could actually like put the idea of subtraction, like uh, taking a minus operation. So I imagine this very abstract mathematical thing, which is like a set, and it would actually like each of these is a member of a set, and it would actually just like they would go diminish into nothingness when you subtract stuff. It doesn't really make much sense, but still. Then we have uh, we have extraction. I, I first tried this. Uh, kind of a scene where there would be like this really uh, thing that big thing that would really remind me of an oil oil derrick, like those oil top pumping towers. But that, that one did not really turn out really well, so I uh, went back to the drawing board. So uh, now there's this this uh, black hole kind of thing, which is extracting uh, something from beyond. So those cubes that are flying there. Uh, then we have contraction. This is obvious. So the thing just contracts. Open up, open up. It's a simple, uh, the thing is a simple fractal and it's just basically just uh, morphing the mesh. Uh, then we have attraction. I first had, I tried to have this scene where there would be like these two uh, planets that would actually kind of attract and repel each other, but then I decided that I want to do uh, this instead. So this, like, it's a grid that's deformed by those things, so they I like attracted to those small flying white things. Uh, then we have then we have ex, uh, retraction, so there's like this plane and those uh, triangle things are kind of like being pulled up, like retracted from where they where they were part. It was originally supposed to be the first they come down and then they go up, uh, like uh, actually being retracted. But the problem was that the scene there was not enough time in the song for the scene, so they had to be really fast to actually go down and up. And uh, the speed does not really, really well uh, go with the just really chilly and slow pace of the music. So I just decided to to skip the first part and just keep going up part. And finally, we have distraction. So uh, there's this spline thing and the other spline thing, and some of the some of the cubes that are traveling with the spline will actually go to the side sideways. So. So uh, it's kind of a distraction. And, uh, the result, uh, there's a scene of all the words, which are basically like the Oscars of the demo scene. This was nominated for the for the most original concept, and they actually had this like when you are nominated, they will send you this like uh, the, the jury, which nominate, does nominations, and they will send you like these emails about like small comments on like what they thought of the production. And, uh, Comments I got were quite amusing, like uh, their interpretations of what I'm actually going for. They had this, uh, I don't remember who, you might be in this room, uh, said that this is kind of like uh, the, uh, like what's happening inside the code, and that's the demo represents that. That was rather amusing, in my opinion, but maybe nice inter interpretation. Uh, some other guy said that this the concept of this whole thing is to bore you to death. That's also a possibility, like if you want to say it that way. And uh, I think this one, of, this is one of uh, the is like a divider in of opinion. And I got lots of really good feedback on it, but I've also had lots of like people like, why did you do this thing? Like, and uh, at the part of this, when they show it during the comp demo competition, they actually. The organizer said that prepare for the most boring two and a half minutes of your life. And I didn't hear about this until afterwards. I was kind of amused. But uh, I am personally, I'm really happy with this production. It kind of describes the way I want to do the most. And uh, finally, uh, my recipe is for doing demos, hard to take ahead, but don't think too much. Like if you, like as the Fiat Lomo example shows that if you like are doing something and actually want to uh, turn it into something else so you think it's cool, go ahead. Uh, I mean, demos are abstract form of art. 
and like nobody from a demo, no one really expects any like nobody really expects it to be sensible. Like experiment on different methods when you're doing demos, so you could you can try storyboarding for some people that works really well. Personally, I don't really like it that much. I tried it twice after making Fiat Homo, which was my first uh, attempt, and in that, in those uh, demos did not really go well. One of them morphed into another demo, one of them was totally scrapped. And even the just do stuff method is, is good. It's actually very good for beginners, like if you're making your first demo, it's just like, it's good to take it to make cool stuff and, and uh, try to go from there. So, uh, I think, remember my first demo, it was released in 1999. We had absolutely no concept, absolutely no uh, no plan, or actually we did have a plan. We had this hugely, hugely, uh, uh, what's the word in English? Uh, we tried to do very much, way too much, it was, uh, and it ended up being something totally else. So in that demo we had this concept of this girl who is actually like stuck into a, inside a computer world, like she's coding in the beginning, then she's stuck in the computer. And like and that has has this cool adventure in the computer world. Actually the only thing that was uh, left from that concept is that in the beginning in the beginning, in the beginning of the demo song there's a sound of keyboard typing which we recorded and we were supposed to like write code on the screen. So that's the only thing that was left. But uh, of course, it was the first demo, and that's kind of kind of what happens when you're making a first demo. Also, don't be afraid to try out freaky things or or uh, impossible things. That's what the whole demo scene is, in my opinion, about. That's what I like about it. So you can do anything, and uh, of course, make cool demos. I hope that this event will inspire you to try out your hand in demo making. It's not really difficult. It's fun. It's uh, it's like game programming, but except without the boring. And I, I know that everybody wants to be a game programmer, so you can just make demos instead. Okay, so thank you.